Hey, what's up, dudes and dudettes? Drew here at The Anxious Truth, and we have another anxiety success story coming tonight, and it is my friend Joyce from California, who I am so excited to have here. Joyce, what's up? What's up, Drew? What up? Thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Everybody loves a good success story, and you are definitely one of those. Absolutely. Yeah. So you were like, you, you reached out not too long ago, a couple of months ago, and you were kind of, uh, you know, excited to do this one. It was almost like it seemed like it was a goal. Like, I'm going to be the next one of those. And I'm, here you are. That's what it was. Yep. Yeah. Total yeah. And I dig it. For it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Here you are. And it's, and it's awesome. And I appreciate that you're doing it. And like, it helps a bunch of people. So I guess let's get into it. So you're on the West Coast, right? Yes, sir. Rainy day yeah. here today in California. Yeah, yeah, we had nothing. It's dry, it's cold, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Day before Christmas, it's supposed to be cold. Yes. So, anyway, so let's get into it. Let's talk about what your particular problem problem was. You were, I mean, we know each other because you, you know, you found the podcast. We're in the Facebook group together, and you're actually one of the admins in the group, which I thank you so much for taking your time you to do bet. that. You bet, of course. Yep, so healthy. And um, you were in that panic disorder thing, panic disorder, agoraphobia. What was the actual manifestation? What was your anxiety issue for, for sure? Um, I had a brain surgery in November 2018. Um, the surgery went well, a couple days later, not so well, um, pretty much had stroke system, um, symptoms and I got the blurry eyes, the numb face, all that good stuff. So I thought I was having a stroke and I ended up having my first panic attack over that. Okay. And uh, so you started with some actual health problems that sort of led to all this. Yeah, and it was nothing really due to the health problems. It was me kind of freaking myself out about what happened after that. I guess uh, it was totally normal to get uh, a migraine, but we weren't warned about it. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. The, the migraine happened, zigzags in the eyes, uh, Face went numb, left side went numb. So I thought, okay, this is from the surgery. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I mean, that was almost to be expected that that would, could, could happen to you after the surgery and nobody told you. Nobody warned us, no. Excellent. Good job. Yeah. Wow. All right. So obviously that would be terrifying. And so you right. go into panic mode. And this is really good because I actually didn't know that entire story. I knew there was some health issue in the background, but I didn't know that exact story. So this is actually really good. Yeah. So I you. I had a brain coiling done on an aneurysm I had in the brain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you know, completely unrelated to the anxiety problem, but those, those sensations were precipitated by the effects post-surgery. Yes. And I just make, make sure I'm getting it right. So this is really good, though, for people to hear. So you, you experience these sensations. Naturally, they're terrifying, of course, given right. where you are having surgery. And, and you have a panic attack because, obviously, it's terrifying, which anybody would, would understand. So, like, purely, ex you know, super explainable, like, appropriate situational fear and panic for sure. Yes. But what happened from there? Then it went away um, okay. that night. A couple days later, same thing happened. I freaked out again. After that time, we decided to call the neurologist and he explained, hey, that's totally normal. You know, wow. don't worry about it. And I'm like, dude, how can I not worry about it? You know, wow. and so after he told me that, um, it happened a couple more times. And then about the fourth time, I was just like, okay, he told me what this is. I need to let it be, it's gonna go away. And those stopped right away after the first okay. four times. After that particular the, the set of symptoms. Yes, sure. yes. Yeah. So what was the progression from there? I mean, how long did it take? So where did you ultimately wind up in terms of anxiety? I mean, what was the impact in your life? Oh man, uh, one day I was at work. Um, I felt something strange going on. Before that, I could tell a difference in myself, but I just was not sure what it is. You know, yeah. I, I didn't know what it was. I didn't want to leave the house that much anymore. I wasn't feeling great all the time. I couldn't see. I went to the mall to go Christmas shopping last year. I had to leave the mall. Um, couldn't look at my Christmas lights. The lights in the house couldn't be on. 
I mean, things were definitely changing for me before that, but I had no clue what was happening to me. Didn't know what that was. No. So I, I'm getting it right. So the physical symptoms, at least the, the holdover from the surgery, goes away, right? Right. Seemed quickly after four episodes or so. Oh, but, yeah. But the, the, but the anxiety symptoms linger after that, it sounds right. like. Am I getting right. that right? Yep. So you learn to kind of be afraid and be on guard like this thing is going to happen again, and then it snowballs from there. So yes. your fear was that this would happen again. Right. Even though the, the symptoms, the actual physical post-surgery things went away, but you were still nervous about how you were feeling, it sounds like. Right. And when I was at work, I mean, customers were asking all the time, every day, how I was. You know, sure. how is your surgery? How are you feeling? This, this, right. and that. So it's like I could never get away from it. Yeah. You know, it but was always were, that question. Being concerned and all that, but absolutely in your face all the time. Yes. So subconsciously, yeah. it was bothering me. Right. So, how long a time was it where things, you know, those first four episodes and then things start to snowball where you don't want to leave the house so much and you don't want the lights on and you're, you're constantly scanning for how you're feeling and the surgery was November, December, I could feel the change. And then January 16th, I will never forget. I what was time? At, January 16th. I was at work taking an order and somebody asked me how I was and I pretty much dropped my book. I left my job. I got my car. I don't remember the ride home. And I came home and I laid down and I literally had such a bad panic attack. And things yeah. from then on, it was done for me. So explain done. Like, how did it, I'm guessing the snowball starts rolling down the hill. Oh, now. yeah. Two days later, um, I went to see my GP. Uh, she gave me a prescription for Xanax and to calm me down some. And then that was a Friday. And the next day on Saturday, I woke up and I looked in the mirror and I couldn't even look at myself. I was afraid of my own face. Yeah. And so from Saturday to there, I came out, <coughs> excuse me. I told my other half, I said, I don't know why but I'm afraid of everything. And that day it, it was done. I, yeah. I did not leave my house for three months. Oh, wow. But you yeah. recognize that I'm afraid of everything. You didn't know oh. why though. Nope. No clue. Right. No right. Clue. So, okay. Obviously things get bad. You don't leave the house for three months. That's a big deal. Um, what starts to, I mean, obviously, let's talk for a few minutes about the impact on just in general, your life, your relationship, your family, I'm guessing there would be naturally yes. they're concerned or seeing this happen to you. And how long did you stay in that state? Do you think? Um, probably from January until I would say the end of March. And I think I joined the group in March, maybe mid March. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. That sounds about right. So we're about nine months or so since you sort of showed up. It sounds right. Like. And then, so, all right, so you're stuck in the house. I'm guessing that anxiety panic is a, a daily occurrence at that point. You know, by your own admission, you're afraid of everything. You're experiencing all the, all the feelings, right? All the feelings that we all know yes. about. And so what starts to change? How do, how do things start to change? Because the progress you made over this past summer, it started to become apparent over the summer that you oh, were out. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and starting to make a huge change. So what right. was it? So for the first three months, I pretty much sat on my couch. I had no safe place. I didn't feel safe anywhere. Um, I sat in the corner of my couch and I waited for nine hours until somebody got home. And I would just sit there all day. No TV, no phone, no nothing. And when right. somebody came home, they'd walk through the door and I would have a meltdown. And I would just fall into their arms, bawling my eyes out, saying how scared I was. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, it was pretty bad. So you had no distraction or anything. You couldn't really tolerate it. No phone, no, no TV, no nothing like that. I could not do up. nothing but sit in that corner and shake all day. Even if my, it's ridiculous. Because <laughs> even if my dogs looked at me, you know, they say dogs know when something's going to happen. 
Right, right. My oh. dogs would look at me and I'd be like, what are you looking at? You know, I was yeah, like, something's yeah. going to happen to me today. You know, it was, ah. Uh. It's amazing. Knowing you that I, knowing the Joyce I know now. Right. I, I can't even imagine that was, that was you, which is True. You know, amazing. I, like, can look back today and I don't even know who that person was. Sure. It just seems like a dream to me, you know, it's. It's unbelievable that that happened to me because I've always been very confident. I've always been in control. I've been the one to take care of everybody. So when I became that weak, I was very hard on myself, you know? Sure, sure. So, Difficult. Yeah. So I, I think, um, okay, so then things start to change. You spend three months in this state. You're sitting on the sofa all day long. You're kind of a mess. What, what starts to be different? What, what changes start to happen? Well, I pretty much every day was begging for death. And I would find myself on the floor, beating the crap out of my floor or on my couch or in mm. my bed. And I was just so mad. And I just kept screaming, this is just so stupid. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to be here. I begged for, I mean, it's very emotional for me now. That yeah. because that wasn't me at all, right? You know, and I I just didn't want to do it, and I had nowhere to turn. My family is very supportive, but we still didn't understand what was going on. You know, yeah. the depths of everything that was going on. So I actually started with uh, some other different videos, but I was like, this is too much work for me. I I want something that I can do now for myself. Right. You know, I was like, if I'm not going to die, I'm not going to live like this either. So I need to do something. And right. then I uh, found your group and mm -hmm. your videos and started watching them. And then I tried to listen to Claire Weeks, but I couldn't do it. She scared me. I don't know why. That's interesting. Uh, let's talk about that for just a second. All what right. about, you don't know what, but you couldn't listen to her because it, it, I've heard a, f a few people say that. So I want right. to explore that with you because you're saying it now. What do you mean she scared you? Did it just freak you out to hear her talk about the symptoms and things like that? Yeah, it was like everything was going to, it was in my face now. I was having to accept what was really going on. And right. so I had to turn her off. And actually what got me through it was yours and Holly's videos on her book. Okay. So I started listening to you guys and I felt much more comfortable listening to you two go through every chapter than actually right. listening to the book itself. Interesting. Okay. Well, I guess we weren't enumerating symptom after symptom and that sort of thing. Like she right. Was. And you were kind of discussing it more and explaining what was going on. Yeah. You know, more in depth. I think hers was more like doctor wise. And I was yeah. afraid of doctors at that point. So I can understand. Sure. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what's the, what do you start to do differently? So you're listening to videos and, and, you know, learning and what starts to happen? What do you start to do differently? I start to understand what's happening. Um, mm -hmm. Everything. I started studying what was happening to me. Um, and then when I learned to just sit with it, let it happen, I started to do that, which of course I was white knuckling at first, Everybody you know, does. yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah. even though I was white knuckling, I was like, okay, I'm still doing it. I might not be learning anything, but I'm setting myself up for now for what I know I need to do. Yeah. So my very first step was actually taking a walk down my front porch and because I would not go down the front porch at all or out yeah, front sure. at all. Okay. And so my wife was at the bottom of the stairs, you know, and she was like, just come to me. Come on, just come to me. And I was a million miles away. Yes. And I was like, I can't, I can't do it. And she's like, please yeah. just come. I know you can. So I did it. I walked down the stairs and the next day I walked down the stairs again and I walked down them again and then to the end of my driveway. And before you knew it, within probably less than two weeks, I was walking around my block. 
Excellent. Now, just to clarify for the people that are watching, because this is this is your textbook, what you're describing as textbook. The first time you walk down those steps, that's that leap of faith. I'm guessing you were terrified to do that, but you did it anyway. I was terrified, but you did do a video of uh, you and Holly, and you guys were like, you just have to do it. You have to jump, you yeah. know, if you're going to get anywhere. And at that point, once I got down to her, I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to yeah. take this leap of faith. I made it. Tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing. And I just got in like a really, I was gung-ho after that. You yeah. know, yeah. that's what it took was that first time. And then after walking the block, I was like, okay, it's time to drive. You know, and yeah. it was pretty yeah. funny because I looked like a grandma because I would sit up. And, yeah. uh, you know, the whole white knuckling thing again. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, but I did it. I went, uh, I went through where I live. I have a pretty big community here. And mm. I did that, started out there. Then I started going about six miles outside of here. Right. And then the six miles became, you know, further and further and further. And right. then I was driving an hour away. So it was just repetition. It, right. Repetition. So the first time you do something new, it's scary and it's uncomfortable, but you just repeat it and it becomes less scary and more comfortable. And then you get bigger and then yes. bigger and then bigger. Right. That's the process. Well, everybody knows I call it torturing myself. And I did a lot of torturing myself. <laughs> is, that, is that what you tell everybody that you're doing? Oh, yeah. Torture. Yeah, to a certain extent, I could understand that. And I mean, you're also very funny, so I understand the way you, your sense of humor <laughs> goes. But a lot of people look at it that way. And that's sometimes what scares a lot of people about this process. Like, wait, I want you to make me feel better. I don't, I don't want to do these hard things. But you, you put your nose to the grindstone and like, you got so determined, almost angry determined. Like your I voice was... stuck out in the crowd to me. Oh, you were I was very angry. I yeah. call myself a bitter, anxious person. You know, I, I wasn't depressed or sad. I was very mad. Yeah. And being very mad just pushed me harder and harder every single day. I mean, no time off. When you say no time off, I took no time off. Yeah. You know, yeah. just recently when football season started, I started taking Sundays off. So. Well, you also had gotten to the point where that no days off doesn't last forever. I mean, you had right. gotten to the point. So, so you do this work for over the course of a period of months. So you started in the summer and football season starts, you know, in the middle of September. So yep. you did a good, you know, you found the group in March, April, May, June, July, August. There's six months of that. Going right. On before you got to the point where it's like, oh, I'm going to take a day off and like hang out, watch football. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is great. And so but, and you, I'm guessing that you would have gotten to the point where you could live again most of your daily life. Because we all have that life. It's in some zone, whether you work a mile from home or 20 miles from home. Like we all have a zone we live probably 80% of our life in many times. And yeah, so you after, after yeah. every time I did something, it, it does. It feels better. It gets easier and easier. Right. You know, I didn't have the anxiety every single day, every single minute anymore. You know, it, it yeah. slowly went away each time and you get more comfortable with being uncomfortable. And it, I was uncomfortable for a while, but I got comfortable yeah. with being uncomfortable. Yeah. And then that goes away. When you become uncomfortable being uncomfortable, then the discomfort starts to vaporize. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hard for a lot of people to swallow that or, or accept it or decide to do it, but it worked for you, which is great. Well, yeah, because so, you don't believe it, yeah. you know, you believe this is never going to end. And that's just something else you have to practice, you know? So you left your job, like when the wheels fell off in January. Right. right. And, and I know recently, like you, you were working today. I didn't wait for you to come home from work. I did yes. work today. Yeah. 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 Yep. To Right. And so, you know, you start taking some days off and you made some great progress back when football season started. So it's about three months ago. What's happened for the past three months? Oh, I do absolutely everything. I mean, there's nothing I don't do now. I yeah. and I do even more now. Like I find myself. Even if I fear something, I'm going to yeah. do it. And it makes me want to do it even more to prove to myself that I can do it. Yeah. 
I'm I'm not afraid of anything anymore. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a great yeah, feeling. Yeah. <laughs> of well, well, I'll tell you that later. But anyway, um, <laughs> I think what's cool is that, and then recently you decided to go back to work. Yes. Right. That was in the past month or so. It's and, only been like two weeks. Okay, I two started weeks. a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, and there was still some apprehension. I remember you weren't one hundred percent sure about that. But how's that working out so far? Oh my gosh, it's awesome. And I just love being around everybody again. And yeah. I took a step down. Um, so it's not as stressful and starting off, you know, I already find myself trying to run the place and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, <laughs> you don't say, nah, you? <laughs> and I'm trying to take a step back and not be like that anymore, you okay. know, just to relax and chill and work and do my job and not be in control anymore because I had a really big problem with being in control. So. Yeah. So let me throw something out here because I think you could probably relate to this. So many people just like they hope and pray to get the old you back. Like I just want the old me back. Right. And yet, you got old the old Joyce. I don't want to say old Joyce because that's not right. But you got the old Joyce back. But now you just said something like, well, I've decided not to be exactly like that. Step right. back. Be chill a little. Yep. Enjoy my life a little more. So – I often find that you get the old you and an augmented version, like a better version of the old you. Are oh you finding that be true? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I find myself, I was very restricted at times before where I didn't want to do certain things or I'd be like, oh my God, that's so stupid and I don't want to do it. But now I want to do everything. I want to experience everything there is to experience. So, yes, I'm a new, so, improved me, for sure. New and improved. Old yes. Joyce is back. New improvements. It's great. Exactly. So, and my yeah. family says the same thing. You know, they're like, God, you just want to do so much more. And, you know, I used to come home from work and just sit on my couch, watch TV. I'd be done because I'd be tired from work. But now I'm, I'm ready to go all the time now, for sure. So you now you found maybe a better balance between work and life and don't kill yourself at a job and so you can enjoy the rest of life and that sort of stuff. Perfect. That's perfectly said right there. Yep. Love it. Love it. That's yep. great. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, you're like a textbook example, my friend. Like, you really are. It's, you know, and the fact that you give of your time to, to help try and teach other people that is, says a lot about you, too. So if you could give somebody a, one bit of advice, like, what was the turning point for you? What, what did it? Where did your, I know where your spark came from. You were clearly motivated much in the same way I am. Mm -hmm. I was, I was fed up and angry and that's it. I was, I was like a juggernaut on a roll. I wasn't, it wasn't going to stop. But what was the biggest, what's, what one bit of advice could you give somebody? I think that made all the difference for you. If there is even one, sometimes that's a hard question. That is a really hard question. What I can say is you feel like you are so lost but you're really not, you're still in there and you just seriously, you need to be fed up. You have got to be so sick and tired of being stuck in your house, yeah. not being able to be around people, not being able to live the way you want to live. You know, yeah. you just, that's my biggest thing. I got so frustrated with the way I was and I wasn't going to do it anymore. You know, yeah. I was, I was done. I, it, it only took me this year and I understand people go through different things, but I couldn't do it anymore. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. So Anger it wasn't me. Both. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Very good. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think we pretty much covered it. And like I said, everybody loves a good success story. And I don't know anyone better than yours. So this is really awesome. And like, this you have is some very cool. Of very cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much good stuff in front of you, and it's so exciting to see. So I'm digging yeah. it. But I thank you for coming on and taking the time. I know you're busy course. today. Super duty. And um, I guess if anybody is – you know what? Like if you're watching on YouTube, you can always leave comments. I'll relay them to you. You know, if you're in the group and you're seeing it, of course, Joyce is in the group. So if you want to ask questions, I'm sure she'll be happy to answer. And I don't know. I guess that's it. Thank you very much, my friend. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Drew. All right. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye.